It is true, you never do know what will come through that door. Hey guys, it's Phoebe with Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shocking Pawn Star discoveries. You know what? This is Houdini's jacket from January 1st, 1915 in St. Louis. That is absolutely awesome. We're taking a look at the most amazing things that have ever popped up on Pawn Stars. Let's get to it. Number 10, Jimi Hendrix guitar. American made Fender Stratocaster. This guitar was actually played by Jimi Hendrix. That's a big wow factor right there. The Pawn Stars love them some guitars, and in this episode, they hit upon a big one. A man came in claiming that he had Jimi Hendrix's 1963 Fender Stratocaster, a guitar that Hendrix played in the studio. If this was actually owned and played by the legend himself, this will be the coolest guitar ever to walk into my shop. They quickly discovered its legitimacy through the serial number, and the appraiser valued the guitar at a whopping $1 million. Now that's one expensive guitar. Rick offered the owner $450,000 before working up to an offer of $600,000. Six? I can't do it, man. However, the owner wasn't willing to part with anything less than a cool mill, and Rick lost out on a piece of rock history. You want to come to a fair point in selling something of great value? Don't be desperate about it. And that I am not. Number 9. 1922 High Relief Peace Dollar High Relief Matte Finish Coin Where did you get this? I won it at a poker game. You never know what you'll win in a poker game. A man came into the shop asking $20,000 for a fancy coin he had won in a poker game. A coin expert identified the coin as a legitimate 1922 high-relief peace dollar, which according to him is one of the rarest coins in American history. The 1922 high-relief peace dollar is one of the rarest coins in American history. He then valued the coin between $50,000 and $100,000, which if you're good at math, you'll realize is a little more than $20,000. The man eventually sold the peace dollar to Rick for $80,000, which is a little on the low side, apparently. But hey, we wouldn't complain about earning $80,000. Meet me in the middle at 80 and you got a deal. It's a deal. All right, okay. Number eight, the Book of Mormon. Here, a fellow walks into the shop with a piece of American history, the Book of Mormon. This is a version that was printed actually in 1842. This one wasn't printed in many copies, maybe 600 something copies. So I was gonna ask something on the order of like $25,000 for it. Damn. The book was first published by a Joseph Smith in 1830, and Adam's fifth edition copy was printed in 1842. According to the customer, it was also the last edition published in Joseph Smith's lifetime, as he died in June of 1844. The Book of Mormon is not just a book of theology, it's really a book that talks about the American experience. This is the fifth edition, and this was the last one that was actually printed in Joseph Smith's lifetime. As Rick said, it's not just an important religious manuscript, but one of the most valuable pieces of American literature. The appraiser, Rebecca Romney of Bowman Rare Books, valued the book at $40,000, making it the most valuable book that had ever been appraised by Rebecca. I would appraise this book actually at about $40,000. Oh. Adam walked away with $24,000, only one grand less than what he was originally asking. You gave me an extra thousand last time, this time I'll give it to you, so we'll do okay. it that way. It's a deal. When Rebecca said $40,000, I felt it was like, maybe like Joseph Smith when he found the plates. Hallelujah. Number seven, 1932 Lincoln Convertible V12. I have a 1932 Lincoln Convertible V12. Yeah, the cast of Pawn Stars also loves them some guitars, but they really love them some cars. A man known as Uncle Phil offered the men of the pawn shop a 1932 Lincoln Convertible V12, a fancy car that included the Lincoln L head V12 engine. It's crazy that Lincoln made this badass ride at the height of the Great Depression. It could produce up to an impressive 150 horsepower, which for the era was quite impressive, and it competed with the Cadillac V12 in its day. And to think, this baby was manufactured during the Great Depression. It's a luxury car, which according to Rick, can fetch up to $170,000 provided it's in mint condition. In perfect condition, this could sell as high as 170 grand at auction. However, the car had a few minor imperfections, so Rick managed to snag it for $95,000. We could do gold. We take 95? Okay. All right. Okay. Number six, 1961 Fender Stratocaster. You may not know the name Vic Flick, but the man has been around. Flick was a studio musician from the late 50s to the early 80s who played with the likes of Nancy Sinatra and Tom Jones. I've worked on records with uh, 
Nancy Sinatra and Petula Clark, Tom Jones, it's not unusual. All right. So were you like a studio mus I musician? I was, I was, from 1958 till about 1983. Perhaps his main claim to fame is that he played the famous guitar riff on the original James Bond theme. <laughs> So yeah, you know his work. In this episode, he was selling his 1961 Fender Stratocaster, which was valued at $70,000. According to the appraiser, that specific guitar can be heard on a lot of popular songs from the 60s and 70s, perhaps more than we even think. You've heard this guitar probably more times than you even realize. You've heard this particular guitar. Probably true, yeah. Yeah. So what do you think it's worth? Easily sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. Vic was happy to walk away with $55,000, saying he and his wife would pop out for a beer or two to celebrate. I knew he'd probably go for fifty-five, dollars and I'm happy. Now I've got the money in my back pocket, I think the wife and I will just pop out for a beer or two and celebrate the occasion. Number five, George Washington suit. Drum roll. Whoa. Yeah. So is this George Washington's too? It is. Season 15 saw one of the greatest items in Pawn Stars history, a suit worn by none other than George Washington. The silk suit is from the mid 18th century and was originally pink in color before time did its thing and washed out all the dye. Back then it was pink and you could still see some of the pink in this area. At the time, pink was a fashionable color that signified success and luxury. As you can imagine, a suit worn by George Washington will fetch a bit of money. And the seller was asking three million. So how much? Uh, I wouldn't sell for less than three million dollars. That was, however, a little too much for Rick, who offered two million before bowing out. Maybe now the seller can sell or donate the suit to a museum, where it should have been all along. Since we're friends, I would, the best price, absolute best price would be two and a half million. Okay, and you're firm at that? Absolutely firm at that. I mean, okay, well, I guess the suit's out then. Number four, the OJ Simpson Bronco. It is the OJ Bronco. Are you kidding me? I've never seen anything quite like this. The image of a white Ford Bronco became a piece of American history on the afternoon of June 17, 1994, when Simpson and Al Cowlings entered into a low-speed chase with the police after a warrant was issued for Simpson's arrest. Nearly 25 years later, that very same Bronco wound up on Pawn Stars. The seller, who was OJ's agent at the time, states that he had previously turned down an offer of $500,000 and asked Rick for $1.3 million. How much you want for this? A million three. Um, yeah, think about it. It's a one of a kind. However, Rick thought buying the Bronco was too much of a gamble and passed, telling the seller that he should take the SUV to an auction. I'm gonna pass on it? Okay. With something like this, it's so much of a gamble because there's nothing to compare it to its price. Right. I'll never sell the Bronco for under a million dollars. I know it's worth that, and if it's not, it will be. Number three, JFK's humidor. I have John F. Kennedy's cigar box he used in the White House. JFK was a bit of a cigar aficionado, among other things, and Rick was lucky enough to come face to face with his personal cigar box. Included in the package was the humidor itself, as well as eight individually wrapped cigars. The box contains 11 hand-rolled cigars wrapped in clear plastic. What do we got? There. Eight. There's a few missing. So someone smoked three of the cigars? Not me. That's how I got it. According to the official document written by JFK's secretary, the humidor was given to the president as a birthday present on May 29th, 1962, just 18 months before he was assassinated. This is one of those once in a lifetime items. If I let this thing walk out the door, I'm never gonna see another one like it. The seller was asking for a relatively meager $95,000, but walked away with just 60,000. How much are you asking? Well, as you know, the other comparable one went for half a million bucks or so. I need some quick cash or else I would just put that in an auction and get 150, 200 grand, whatever it's gonna go for. Mm. I'll give it to you for 95,000. We're not experts or anything, but that seems like a really small amount for such a personal piece of history. I took 60, it's fine, because if I would've put it in an auction, I would've had to wait about six months, 
We need money now to get this new facility, so I'm good. Number two, the Beatles' original contract. I actually got one of the most important documents in rock and roll history. The contract between Brian Epstein, who was the manager, and the Beatles creating the partnership between the two of them. When it comes to the most important pieces of musical history, the Beatles' original contract is pretty freaking high on the list. The seller put it nicely when he called it the holy grail of rock and roll. The contract was between the Beatles and their manager Brian Epstein, and it stated that Epstein would receive 25% of all Beatles royalties. Brian Epstein was a genius. He basically transformed the Beatles from an unknown band playing small clubs into the biggest rock band ever. When he died, he couldn't be replaced, and it played a large role in the Beatles breaking up. Epstein served as a major influence on the Beatles' image and popularity, and was even referred to as the fifth Beatle before he died of an accidental sleeping pill overdose in 1967. Despite the seller asking for $1 million, it was professionally valued at $500,000. There's no question that this is genuine. I'd put the value of this piece right at around $500,000. Rick pounced and offered just $350,000, and the seller was forced to walk away. I would go three fifty. dollars That's cash right now. If you don't take that, I would wait for another auction. Um, I'm going to have to decline in the 350 Good luck with it. I appreciate it. Thanks very much. Classic Rick, always lowballing people. Like, seriously, 350000 for The Beatles' original contract? Come on, Rick. Before we get to our topic, here are some honorable mentions. Not that I've sold on the free market. It's cooler than the other ones. But, you know, I don't know. I, uh, all the things you said, I appreciate, uh, and, and uh, they're all valid points. I still think that's a little low. Would you do 67? I'll go 60 grand. 62, Rick. I'll write you a check for 60 grand, and it'll even be good. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I could do. I'll do it. Uh, I got a gold bar I want you to look at. What do you think, Pops? Um, it's gold. I mean, it looks like shipwreck stuff. I buy gold from people every day but I never have gold bars from a shipwreck walking to my shop. Well, what you have is definitely coral incrustation. These particular stamps I recognize from the 1500s. This is definitely shipwreck treasure. I've had it in the store for years because I really, really don't want to sell it unless someone offers me just some stupid amount of money. Some neat facts about the ring. It's got right around two carats and diamonds. Uh, it's over two ounces of 14 karat gold. And it's on sale at the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop for only $100,000. You know this business. I'm not making a lot of money on this. And neither am I. So out of courtesy, I'll do 67.5. Um, you got a deal, man. Thank you very much. This order was founded in 1325, and the White Eagle is basically the symbol of Poland. It's on their national emblem. But they changed it. They took the original style of the award, they put it on top of the Russian Imperial Eagle, which is the eagle with two heads. OK. OK? So now it's a Russian order, and that's what this is. Not quite at the end yet. Almost there, though. Just be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. All right, back to business. Number one, 3,000 ounces of silver. I got some 90% silver dimes over here, some quarters. I got these bars, and this thing alone is almost 75 pounds. It's not often that 3,000 ounces of silver comes through your door, but make hay while the sun shines, right? Jeff, the owner of the silver, wheeled 3,372 ounces of silver into the shop, causing the old man to practically leap from his desk so he could inspect the glorious find. I've never seen you get up from your desk that quick. I always get up, son. Not generally very Move quick. Hand. Included in the collection were bags of dimes and quarters, numerous silver bars, and a 75-pound brick of pure silver. After doing some headache-inducing math, Rick discovers that the pile was worth $110,000, which Jeff was happy to accept. You got $46,000 for the coins, $33,390 for these bars right here. 32.39 times 942 equals. So we got a total of... $110,901. Turns out silver is a pretty good investment. Now, if only we had 3,000 ounces of silver laying around. I'm really glad my dad taught me to invest, because today I'm walking out with over $100,000. I'm going to take one of these, Rick. Um, no, no, you're not. Wait a second. You guys don't have a big barrel of silver just, like, hanging around at your house? Uh, yeah, me neither. What do you guys think of our list? Let us know in the comments below and check out this video.